to debate me on this level and you start saying, that's okay. Don't even worry about it. It's all good, baby. Just chill. Rock with the music, honey. It's all right. It don't even matter. <laughs> Talk to the hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's in a dilemma now, and he is fighting, he, he is fighting, his greatness is coming out, it's crowning. And when greatness crowns, it creates conflict, because it does not crown when you have been placed in the position, it crowns before. You're rich before you got the money. You're educated before you got the degree. You're a preacher before they ordain you. You're a leader before you get the job. You're a visionary before you become a CEO. You're a wife before you get married. You're a husband before you find the woman. If you're not that before, you won't be after. He's a grown man. He's blessed. He got things he wouldn't have gotten any other way. Education by the Egyptians. The Egyptian culture we are still studying. Their advancement in technology is still intimidating even to modern scientists today. Their architectural abilities have caused people to travel for miles to study the pyramids. Moses was exposed to that. You to get this, you better give me, I believe, the book of Kings. Amen. The Lord told one of the kings the condition of his house. Yeah. He wanted to get in order. Yeah. If I'm correct. Yeah. He told him, get that house yes. in order. Yeah. Give me the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah chapter 38. Follow me. Isaiah chapter 38, and we're at verse 1. I want everybody to listen at this, and you that are watching around the world, you that are here that believe you're tough, you're not. You that believe that you don't have to be saved, and you already saved, and Pastor Jennings, I'm a born-again Christian. All right, we're going to check that up with the Bible, too. Check that out. We're going to check your so-called Christianity with the Bible. That's right. And brother, when the Bible talk, you better listen. That's right. I want everybody to follow me. Get this. Isaiah chapter 38, and we're at verse 1. All right. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Now Hezekiah was a righteous king. Amen. That's what you don't have many of today, righteous preachers, Amen. where the fear of God is in them. Amen. Many used to fear God until money puff their pockets out. When they didn't have nothing, they feared God. Now they got money and mega churches. Fear of God gone. Preachers look more like pimps than preachers. Wives look more like prostitutes. They're holy, sanctified women. Amen. Gay men all over the choir. Amen. Lips shining like armor all on the tire. Preachers, right, listen. That's right. Preachers now have respect the person, church favorites, and the first favorites will be their family. That's why the father is the bishop, wife first lady, daughter secretary. Sir. Son is treasurer. Yes, sir. Hey, you in a family business. Yes, you ain't in no church. Right. It's a family business. Yes, I listen to the old man. Follow me. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And, and Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah the messenger. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the son of Amos came unto him. And said what? And said unto him, thus saith the Lord. You know, it's good to hear a word from the Lord. Now I want all of you to understand this scripture is not only for everybody in here but the whole world. This message is for the whole world. That's right. Get this. Thus saith the Lord. Thus 
Serve the Lord. Set thine house. Set thine house in order. Why? For thou shalt die and not live. On Easter, so the day that we're celebrating the resurrecting of our Savior, I felt like a tomb had been rolled over my hope, over my destiny, like the stone had just been rolled over every dream that I could ever have. And it was in that moment that I really felt like that the goodness of God, the grace of God was reserved for people who did everything the right way. And it wasn't until I started connecting with other people and really just realizing that we all have a story, we've all gone through something, that I felt like the stone began to roll away a bit. But I felt um, useless. I felt dirty. I felt like there was no promise for my life. And I felt like my role would be to see everyone else in life win while I sat there and licked my wounds. And as I began to see that I wasn't in it by myself, I believe that that's a trick that the enemy plays on our minds is that he makes us believe because of our issues and because of our struggles that we have to live life in a prison. And so we go about our day and we look like we're free and we're still in our homes and our marriages on our workforces. And it looks like we're free, but on the inside, we're hurting, we're broken. We don't believe anymore. But what helped me and what I hope my story does for other people is just remind you, you're not in this by yourself. You are not the only one facing what, you, what you're currently facing. The, as a matter of fact, the thing that you're currently facing, someone has already overcome. And because they've overcome, there is hope for your story. People have had it worse. People have had it better. Stop comparing your story to what's happened in other people's life and start to decide right now in this moment that I am not going to allow this stone to be rolled over my destiny. Jesus died so I don't have to get on the cross. God, what do you want to do with my life? What do you want to do with my brokenness? What do you want to do with this pain that I felt? Because I serve a God who makes all things work together for our good. But that working feels like crushing sometimes. It feels like pain and disappointment. But it also, on the other side, <laughs> I mean, look at our lives now. It's restoration that you couldn't imagine. And there's a time when you will look back and you will thank God. You will thank him for the tears that are currently streaming down your face.